everyone welcome to my channel my name is vivian if you are new here i like to make faith related videos lifestyle videos and i really just like to share my life with you guys and just want to say that i'm not perfect i'm in no way shape or form have arrived or anything like that i am working on myself i'm god is still working on me there's still things that i need to work on but these are just seven important habits that i've really been implementing in my life and that i find very important some of these you know some of them i'm pretty good at some of them i'm not the best at but these are seven things that i know god is leading me to to become more diligent and all these habits i'm going to talk about they take effort and they don't just come naturally this is something that you have to put effort into so i'm gonna turn this stop being lazy which was one of my most popular videos stop being lazy i did it about a year ago and you know that video really blew up and a lot of people were touched by it so i wanted to make a series on it and for today's video on stop being lazy i'm just gonna share seven important habits that god has put on my heart and like i said everybody's different your life looks different than mine. Your schedule looks different than mine. Um, I'm a wife and I'm a mother. Some of you may be single, so some of, the, some of the things that I may say may not directly imply to you, but it is something that you could put into play now. So my number one tip, which I mean, it's pretty obvious. Keep number one, number one, which is god keeping god number one making it a priority and by that i mean prayer so god prayer and the word has to be number one in our life because our life needs order and god needs to be number one for our life to be in order if we don't have god as number one our life will not be in order so i want to read to you guys matthew 6 6 but when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you, and pray to your Father in private. Then your Father who sees everything will reward you. Mark 1.35 Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place to pray. So, with that being said, prayer has to be number one we have to have alone time with god we have to get the word we have to have an intimate and close relationship with god in order to do anything in order to even keep any of these habits that i'm about to tell you if god's not number one in our life and that's not our priority then everything else that we try to do is going to be on our own strength so make sure you guys are praying make sure god is number one and just this is the best way I can remember it and only say it. Keep number one, number one. Number one above anything, above everything, above anyone. Far above anyone, far above your husband, far above your children, far above yourself. God is number one. Is get up early. Now, I did share Mark 135 already, which, you know, very early in the morning, while it was dark, Jesus got up. So that implies to all of us, right? I am going to share a Proverbs 31 scripture fellas i gave you the male scripture i mean that scriptures for both of us jesus got up early to go pray and seek god so we must do the same this is something that's very important to me and ever since i got married um it's something that i've really been trying to put into play especially since i do not go to work super early in the morning anymore Proverbs 31 15 she gets up while it is still dark she provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls Jesus got up when it was dark Proverbs 31 woman gets up when it's when it's dark so we're all called to get up early okay and like I said you're not gonna be perfect you're not gonna be 10 out of 10 every single week give yourself space and grace to get this habit because from experience i can tell you getting the habit is hard you can get the habit you can get the habit of getting up early keeping it is hard as well but if you're disciplined and you don't allow your flesh to run the show it is something that is very possible and you can do i shared this scripture because one thing that i've been doing myself is i've been getting up to make breakfast for my husband um, and make him his lunch before he goes off to work 
that's something that I've seen. I didn't really see my mom doing that, but I saw my stepmom doing that. And I didn't even know about the Bible back then, but now I'm thinking about it. My stepmom is literally Proverbs 31. That's wild. This is something that I do myself. I get up early and I make my husband breakfast and I make him lunch to take to work. Now, am I perfect? No, I literally have the nicest husband ever. Like this guy will see me sleeping and will not wake me up and he'll go the whole day without eating. And I'll literally tell him like, why did you not wake me up? Like, I want to do this for you. Like, this is something I want to do. And he, he just tells me, well, I wanted you to rest. You seem super tired, so I didn't want to wake you up. So my husband is so, so nice. I'm grateful. But I told him, like, no, you got to get me up because I got to make you breakfast. I got to make you lunch. I got to, you know, I want to be a Proverbs 31 woman, and I fully embrace it. Okay, I fully embrace it. Uh, some of you may have grew up different and see the world different, as in, like, I'm not going to do that for him because all that feminine, like, alpha female stuff trust me that's some something and someone like i used to be i used to be that girl i'm fully embracing that proverbs 31 and i personally love taking care of my husband i love it i love doing that for him and it's something that i've really been implementing and even just making getting up and making breakfast for amelia amelia is she can be very independent sometimes and if I'm so sleeping, like, I'll find this girl eating strawberries and a piece of bread by herself. Like, she won't wake me up. And I'm just like, geez. That's why waking up early is so important, especially if you have kids. So, tip number two, get up early. Make breakfast for your family. If you don't have a family, if you don't have a husband, get up and make breakfast for yourself. Do it for yourself. So, whenever you're married, you're already prepared and it's something that you're already used to. Number three, keep your space clean 1 corinthians 14 40 let all things be done decently and in order i'm the type of person that if my room is not clean if my house is not clean i can't think i can't pray i can't it's almost like i have brain fog above my head and like it's a blockage between me and god like if i'm trying to pray in a messy room i literally have to make my bed before i pray because if I'm seeing my bed not done, what I'm thinking about when I'm praying is I gotta make my bed, I gotta make my bed, my bed looks so ugly, my room looks so unorganized. Look at that sock right there, that sock is just sitting right there, I should really put it in the dirty laundry. Like, that's the type of person that I am and so I have to keep my space clean because I can't think straight. I can't think straight, I can't think in, like I can't receive from God because I'm so focused on the mess rather than my prayer time with God. Now, if my room is clean and um, everything's organized, my bed is done, like I can be in peace and pray. Something that I've been implementing and doing is I have a schedule. Every single Monday, I do my laundry. So Monday is really like my cleaning day. So I'll do my laundry on Monday, I'll clean the kitchen, um, I'll clean the kitchen and the living room, I'll vacuum everything, I'll clean the windows, I'll clean the mirrors, I'll do all of that, but so it won't be too much. The bathroom, I usually do it on a Friday. Be clean and have a schedule for your cleaning. Like some things, obviously you can't really have a schedule for your dishes because you're gonna have dishes every day. Something that I do to help me because dishes is literally my least favorite chore. So one thing that I do is I keep, um, paper or plastic, whatever, paper, styrofoam, plates, um, bowls, forks and spoons because I don't want to be washing dishes all day. So yeah, one thing that I do to help me out is I keep the plastic plates. Number four, my fourth habit um, for this is telling my money where to go instead of my money telling me where it goes. So I've been really cracking down on finances lately um being very detailed down to the day that down to the day that we spent the money i have a spreadsheet and i also have a block schedule which i do want to show you guys you guys are kind of i mean i don't mind showing you guys this but basically what you see in the red is all of these um expenses that we've had and then like Green is our bills, yellow is income, um, but 
I've been really cracking down on our finances and just seeing like what are we spending money on so the block scheduling um, is really this is like one way to organize your life this is not really for finances but I like to see um, I like to see the day that we spent the money and what we spent it on. For example, Chick-fil-A, $25.17. So just making sure that we know what day and why we spent it. And then I have this spreadsheet that um, it just really shows you where, where the money's going. So for this month, it's kind of crazy. This is how much money we spent on our cars this month. Gas, smog check, oil change, um, Anything that has to do with the car, DMV bill, we put in this little um, area. Then we got our tithe in church. Um, in general, just any expenses, if we spend any money at the church, like to buy coffee or anything. Any books that we've bought in is right here. Um, like this is my tuition for um, Freedom International School of Ministry, which is something that I'm in. And it is $125 dollars per session so so far this month we spent 819 on that how much money we spent on group so we both have our own groups and we do spend money on food um, because we're hosting people we want to make sure that they're fed and they have a good experience so we spend money on that eating out we spend around 200 which is not bad and our laundry is 30 dollars and then i still have more um things to add on here but this is like really showing me where our money is going oh i'm zoomed in <laughs> if you guys are wondering my skin is not perfect by the way some of you guys think that but my camera has a little bit of a softening effect i i can see where the money is going and i'm not wondering where the money is going this month i really started keeping track and I started cracking down on everything. Like, where's all our money going? What can we cut out? What don't we need? And what are our bills? What is What are our bills that are mandatory? Like, how much is that? You guys need to know that. You need to know how much money in bills is coming out. For example, for us, I have it here on my block scheduling. I think in total for bills, we have around $3,000. And that includes our rent. So those are mandatory bills. That doesn't include our groceries. That doesn't include our gas. Uh, those are like mandatory bills. So even just knowing how much you have to you have per month in bills, that's something that you need to know. And the reason why this is in this series, you may be wondering like, why is this in the stop being lazy? Because it's so easy to just spend your money and have no idea where it's going. It takes effort. It takes time to keep track of your money. It's not even the best feeling either. Sometimes when I'm doing this and I'm looking at the money that we spent and a lot of it is me like being honest which is why my husband is the one that holds all the money we tried for me doing it but i'm a little bit too crazy with the money so he holds all the money but um basically i'm just like seeing like hey maybe those 50 bucks i spent on amazon this month were not necessary i need to know where my money's going and i need to be very 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 diligent and i need to be aware because the only reason why I decided, hey, I need to buy something to make coffee at home was because one of the months when I did finances, I spent like $300 at coffee shops. That is ridiculous. Specifically Starbucks. I believe it was around close to $300. So it was around 200 something, but it was close to $300 on how much I spent on like Starbucks, coffee beans, and things like that. So... When I saw that, I was like, no, I need to cut down on that so much. And this month, after reviewing finances, I spent about $15 to $20 on getting coffee outside my home, which is a huge difference. And if it's not exposed, if you don't see it for yourself, you will never do anything about it. And that's why this is in this series. Your finances are so important. They're so, so, so important and you need to know where your money is going. And my husband and I have been very, very intentional and very, very um, precise. And just we're just being very mindful, especially because I stopped working and I'm now going to be doing YouTube full time, which is not a um, steady income unless I have multiple streams, which I am working on. So we have to be very mindful and very precise on our budget and where our money is going and if you want god to trust you with more and you 
you want to put in the effort and put in the time, I 100% recommend that you do this. It is so important and yeah, it takes effort. So you got to be diligent with your money and that's something that I'm really fighting for myself. Oh, let me get my sword really quick. Number five, you guys are, this is another one that you may, may not even think of when you think about being diligent or to stop being lazy. Fight for joy, fight for unity, fight to walk in love. And I'm not saying fight with people, I'm saying fight with the freaking devil in your flesh, okay? It's so easy. And I'm not perfect, guys, especially in this area. It's been tough this, just this season in October. You guys know the month of October, there's a lot of witchcraft, there's a lot of uh, demonic activity, whatever. At the end of the day, Jesus has the victory. They have no power over us and we rebuke every demonic spirit, witchcraft, whatever in the name of Jesus, okay? It has no power. But this month, it is at an all-time high. And so one thing I noticed was that there, there's been a lot of offense, there's been a lot of like just being mad, being in my flesh. And I can't blame the devil completely for that because we still have our flesh. We still have our carne that we have to deal with. So one thing that I'm really fighting for and the reason why it's in this series is because this really takes effort. Because if you're not reading, if you're not in the word, if you're not praying, man, you're not ever going to be joyful. You're not ever going to be fighting for unity. You're not ever going to be fighting for, for love, especially when you're married. Hello, when you're married. Speaking from experience here. Yes, I'm only like two months in, but we have to fight to walk in love. We have to fight to be in unity and we have to fight for joy. Psalms 16. 11. You will show me the way of life, grant me the joy of your presence, and the pleasures of li living with you forevermore. The joy of the Lord is my strength. John 13 35. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Philippians 2 2. Then make my joy complete by being like minded, having the same love being one in spirit and of one mind. Psalms 133.1 How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. Why is this in your stop being lazy video, Vivian? Because it's easy. It's easy to get in the flesh. It's easy to get into offense. It's easy to get into strife. It's easy to not walk in love. It's easy to not want to be in unity. You have to spend time with God. You have to really be renewing your mind with the word you have to not give in to your fleshly desires to want to get mad to want to get annoyed at your husband to want to get annoyed at your wife or whatever the case is or your brothers or your sisters um whoever you live with maybe your family um you have to fight for unity like you have to fight for it you even have to fight for it in prayer especially when you're married you have to come against offense you have to come against bitterness you have to come against jealousy you have to come against a bunch of stuff and not in the natural but in the spirit it takes effort you have to be diligent in your prayer life you have to be diligent in your walk with god you have to be diligent to be renewing your mind with the word of god so this takes effort this takes time and this falls into not being lazy because if we are diligent we are able to be full of joy we are able to walk in unity with our brothers and sisters in christ with our husband with our wives um and we're able we're able to walk in love and not let offense and strife in which is offense and strife is the bait of satan and i found myself this month wanting to give into offense wanting to give into strife more than once and like I said, it's the month of October, so all that witchcraft and demonic activity is at an all-time high. Jesus has all authority, but you really have to be praying so you don't fall into these traps. And I put this in here because if you're full of joy, 
if you're in unity with your brothers and sisters in Christ, if you're in unity with your husband, if you're walking in love, it's easy to get up early. It's easy to keep number one, number one. It's easy to keep your space clean. It's easy to tell your money where to go. Why? Because you're full of joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. You're walking in one with your brothers and sisters and, and your husband in Christ and just all that. You're walking in love. You're not letting offense in. You're not letting strife in. You're carrying the joy. You're carrying the joy the joy the joy of the lord is our strength guys and we need it to be diligent we need it to not give into the flesh we need it to not be lazy to be to be willing and obedient to god we have to carry the joy so that's why that's in in there number six be on time keith moore very powerful preacher you guys should definitely look him up i love listening to his sermons he actually has this he actually has a series on diligence and he touches on this subject about being on time and he said when you're not on time you are telling people that you are more important than them and what does the bible say about that do not think of yourself more highly than others seven things the lord hates one of them is haughtiness that means thinking you're better than others and the reality of being late all the time, and I hate to say it because I struggle with this. I struggle with being on time and I need to get better at this. Proverbs 21, five. The plans of the diligent lead surely to an advantage, but everyone who is hasty comes surely to poverty. What's hasty? Hasty is being in a hurry. That was in my first video. The plans of the diligent. You guys caught that? The plans of the diligent so the diligent people plan lead surely to an advantage so we want to be on time we don't want to be in a hurry being in a hurry leads to poverty that's what the bible says that's what the word of god says and we got to be being on time is being late so we got to be early everywhere we go and i'm working on this like i said i'm not perfect i don't want this video to come across like that I'm just really sharing all of this because these are habits that I'm implementing into my life and that I'm currently working on now. And I wanna share it with you guys because it's important to be diligent in every single area of our life. And number seven, organize your life. Um, this kind of touches on all subjects, but like I showed you guys the block scheduling. So really, really, schedule your life out um if you don't want to do the whole block scheduling thing which i've personally done before and i was doing it for a minute and it was working out very well um that's something that you can do as well on google it's free and you can color code it however you want so it's pretty cool um but you could plan out your days as well on there but one thing that i've recently liked doing let me show you guys i like writing it down i got this at target and it is a it says one thing at a time and the thing i like about this is that it doesn't have any dates or any months on it it's just plain so you could just there's like no pressure you get me you could just do this when you want and here's for example one of the weeks that i planned here in october the beginning of october i have like my top priorities for each day so i make sure i get that done like even even just having a priority priority list will make such a huge difference like if you have a priority list of things that you need to get done the most important things get those stuff done and whatever you don't get done um do it the next day but make sure that whatever you missed the first day um you push to the top of the list for the next day so it could get done so just really organize your life be diligent and i'm currently working on all of these guys i'm currently working on all seven of these okay i am not perfect i'm far from it but every day i allow god to help me to mold me to purify me to refine me so everything that i shared are seven things that are very important to me right now that are really helping me become more diligent and to stop being so lazy and having a purpose some of you feel like you don't have a purpose or like a calling the only way you could find that purpose and that calling and if you already heard god tell you if you're not constantly going into prayer and god's telling you hey i called you to do this i want you to do this you're gonna not want to do it that's why as you like that's why you guys saw me take a huge step back from my channel it's because i wasn't praying 
but I know this is what God calls me to do. I know this is what God wants me to do. And I know that it's some it's a gift that God has given me for his kingdom. And some of you don't even know what your calling is or what God wants you to do. It all starts with keeping number one, number one. And from there, everything will fall into place. And you'll hear God and you have to continue to hear God in that area. Like, hey, I called you to do this. I want you to do this. Because if you don't, your own thoughts, your own your own thoughts and your fleshly desires and the enemy will take over that voice. And their, that voice will become much louder than God's voice. Which is why sometimes we get out of line and get out of... A, get out of the perfect will of God because God's voice is not the loudest voice anymore. It's our own voice and the devil's voice. Just gotta keep running towards God and each day, each month, each season, God's making you better, God's molding you and God is there for you, God loves you. And yeah, that's it for this video. I love you guys so much. Make sure to tune in to the next video. I'm gonna have like a couple videos on this. I'm thinking about doing this once a month. So maybe my next vlog will be a stop being lazy vlog and I'll bring you guys along my day on how I'm implementing these into my life in action. Okay, I love you guys and I will see you in my next video. Jesus loves you guys and yeah, love you guys. Thank you.